right tell the other champs now i'm using the microphone on the macbook air let me know what it sounds like but we're going to do first a speed test between wi-fi 5 and wi-fi 6 so the last generation wi-fi 5 on the macbook pro 16 which is on the right and on the left the m1 mac and it is the m1 mac air so i'm just gonna you know drag a file from my nas simultaneously on both of them and see what happens connected to the same wi-fi i do have wi-fi 6 of course now I've done lots of benchmarks comparing to you know the latest AMD chips, the latest Intel chips, and you know comparing Pro to Air, etc. But this time we're just going to do speed tests, sort of you know everyday sort of usage, boot, wake, and all this sort of stuff. So when I grab the two files, and boom, it initiates fast on the Wi-Fi 6, right? Straight away it's hitting that NAS and it's pulling down. You would have saw that the MacBook Pro on the right, it took a longer time to initiate the download. Now Wi-Fi 6 has better latency it's that's one of its main points it's going to give you better battery life as long as you're using wi-fi 6 network of course and faster transfer speeds now this was a bit of a failed test because i think my nas was choking and needed update so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do this test again and download one at a time and just time it so let's do that but you did see that the wi-fi 6 initiated first okay so now we're on the intel mac and this is the macbook pro 16 and I'm going to grab this sort of three gigabyte file and I'm going to drag it to the desktop coming from my NAS. And I've got to say, even though this is Wi-Fi 5, that is super fast. We're getting over 120 megabytes per second download. That is like cable speed. If you connected an Ethernet cable, that is the same sort of speed there. Wow. And you can see there it's just chewing through it. It's actually quite fast considering that nas only has two hard drives i do have two nases this is a synology one that's probably my actual wi-fi 6 router how fast that is you probably won't get those speeds but there you go 31 well let's say 32 seconds 31.98 so 32 seconds now let's do it with wi-fi 6 now you may note here that i'm actually using a stopwatch from ios so i couldn't do that obviously on the intel mac and look at this thing fly 127 megabytes per second wolf this thing is absolutely flying and yeah i expect it to be faster how much faster i don't know because pretty much the other one was saturating what ethernet can do anyway and that's the bottleneck here is basically my network my ethernet network i do have 10 gigabit on other files but boom there you go three seconds three seconds different from a three gigabyte file so you can imagine how this scales say for example you had a 50 gig file it's three seconds for each three gigs so yeah Wi-Fi 6, baby, that's what I'm talking about. Now let's get into some other sort of, you know, everyday sort of speed tests. Right, tell you ho there, champs. So Goodman here. Now let's do a shootout between the latest silicon from all the vendors here. So AMD 4800U, that's on the left. On the right, we have the XPS 13 with the 1165G7. And then, of course, the M1 Mac in the middle here. So let's see which one boots faster. And as you can see... AMD for the win. AMD boots fast. Now, there's one thing you need to know about this AMD is it's not encrypted. So, you know, compared to the Mac that is encrypted and actually that XPS is encrypted too, that's probably why it boots faster. Now, let's wake them up from a sleep state. Now, obviously, I've only got two hands. So I'm only going to do two at a time and then we'll see which one's faster. Of course, I'll do the Mac in all of these and let's have a look here and lift them up. And by the way, stay tuned, I've got a lot more videos to come on these M1 Macs and comparing them to PCs, etc. I have the 16 gig model coming in, I have videos on that, and there you go, look at that. How quick does that Mac resume? Like, as soon as you lift that lid, it is on. It is on. I mean, that AMD ain't slow. And I've got to say, when it comes to the AMD, I guess it's down to the vendor how fast it boots or not. But certainly in this case, it's not the fastest resuming thing, but... When it comes to the XPS 13, this is EVO certified. So that means it should wake and resume really fast. And it really is fast. Like, it's one of the best, like, PCs you're going to get. And this XPS 13 is so hard, it doesn't have a lip. But let's lift them. And you can see how quick it was. But the M1 was faster. And it's so hard to lift. I cannot do that with one hand. I it needs a lip so I can get under the lid and it also needs to be able to be lift with one hand. I will forgive it when you have a two-in-one because you need a stiff hinge. You don't want it to be too loose. You know what I mean? So let's do that again. 
let's see which one wakes up quicker and boom the mac straight away wakes up as soon as you open that lid the mac wakes up and with the xps 13 or the 1165 g7 it's woken up by the time you have it open but the mac as soon as you lift it it opens they've both got good resume time or wake up times but yeah whatever so let's just do a little speed test here both native chrome boom let's see which one opens first and as you can see it's on the xps 13 or 1165 g7 that is native that app so let's go to their native browser and boom have a look at that now have a look at safari that loads so fast and i have no idea why that took so long to load on the intel system there that edge browser they're both connected to wi-fi 6 5 gigahertz as well so now let's open epic games and this will be very interesting this is not native to the mac okay but i reckon the mac boots up stuff so fast that I don't think it even matters when it's native. We saw Chrome that was actually native was slow. I just blame that on Google. But now let's open the Epic Store on both of them. Boom. Look how quickly it opened on the Mac. All right. That is amazing. It's not even native. All right. So now let's get the Intel MacBook Pro 13. And I'm comparing it to the MacBook Air if I didn't actually mention that. It is an M1 Mac. They're both the same virtually. But let's do a restart. See which one boots quicker. Now that Intel MacBook Pro 13 has been in use for six months. It's been upgraded to Big Sur and not a fresh install. So you can see here it lags when it restarts because, you know, it's probably closing a lot of apps that, you know, run day to day. But even though it lagged there, shutting down, it booted up quicker, at least to the login screen. Now, once you actually type in your password, etc., and then you finish off the boot, so it loads the encrypted volume, this is where the M1 Macs fly. You can see I had a head start with the Intel Mac, but watch this. You saw how much longer the Intel took there. It had a huge head start and the M1 nearly caught it there. So the loading of the encrypted volume, yeah, that's quick, but the actual booting is a little bit slower, it seems, even compared to the 16 inch, as you'll see in a sec. But anyway, so now let's open Safari on both of them here. And Safari is native to both of them. But remember that Intel system on the right has been in use for a while. And you can see there, the M1 is obviously faster. Now let's load Apple TV and yeah, it looks like that was pretty even there. That's interesting. Now let's get the big 16 inch. So first let's do a couple of speed tests. This MacBook Pro 16 has a fresh install of Big Sur, so it should be close up. Boom. M1's faster, but only slightly faster. So this is more even, right? Brand new operating system on both of them, both new. That MacBook Pro 16 hasn't got six months of clutter and, and craft, so it should be more even here. Let's just do the tabs here and see how quickly they fire out. Just boom, boom, boom. They're like a machine gun on both of them, and actually they load quite quick as well. Now let's open photos. That was very similar. Apple TV, let's open that. Wow, let's see here. Wi-Fi 6, I think. I think the app loaded the same time, but just the connection of the Wi-Fi 6. So now let's just open Final Cut and we'll see what happens here. Native on both of them. I have run it on the Intel system. So the MacBook Pro 16 has been run before. It's not the first time. And look at that. The M1 just destroyed there. And it's even got a project. So oh, that's fast. That is fast. Let's open the calendar here. Let's do it. There you go. M1 faster there. By a hair, not by much. All right, so I've shut both of them down now, and now let's do a boot test. All right, fresh installations on both of them. Boom. Wolf, there we go. Now, let's see which one boots. The Intel boots really quick. Look at that, to the login screen. This is the part of the M1 that takes a long time. Now, this is not fair now. So what's going to happen is I'm going to enter the password on both of them and then the M1's going to win. But remember, the Intel had to wait a while before the M1 even got to this stage. So I don't think there's much difference in booting or restarting between these M1s and the Intels when you work out the whole time from getting to the login screen and even booting. There's yeah, stuff all different, but there's definitely a difference in wake times and there's definitely a difference in loading app times. One thing... Look at that Mac, it keeps on dimming the screen all the time. Now I set it to full screen brightness all the time, but every time I log in again, it just goes to dim. I don't know why. We'll just quickly load Safari there. And as you can see, the M1 wins there. Now let's see resuming. I've closed them both up here, and then we're gonna resume. 
see which one loads quick oh boom look at that m1 how fast it is wolf that is fast that is so fast i don't even have to slow that down or anything you saw how fast it is so anyway more to come guys catch you next one telly ho